everyone thanks for listening to my presentations today i'll be talking about pituitary apoplexy pituitary apoplexy have you heard about that before no okay no problem sit back and let's go pituitary apoplexy is the bleeding into the pituitary gland or impaired blood supply to the pituitary gland and subsequently leading to infarction of the pituitary gland. Usually, it is secondary to tumor of the pituitary gland itself. The brief summary of pathophysiology here is that there is pressure that builds up in cellar toxica. And cellar toxica is at the base of the core, and that is where the pituitary gland is housed. That pressure will then compress the optic nerve, the nerves to the ocular muscles, and cavernous sinus. By the time I'll be going through clinical features, you understand this better. The blood supply will later be impeded, and there will be subsequent infarction, affecting hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis, hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis, other ovarian axis, and so on. Well, we'll soon get into the clinical features. Pituitary apoplexy is a rare condition. It is known to be an endocrine emergency. Why that? When we have neuroendocrine dysfunction, particularly in pituitary apoplexy, we will see that we will get into a big problem, particularly with hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, giving us a dysonian crisis. That is why it could be endocrine emergency. It's commonly from pituitary adenoma. In most cases, pituitary apoplexy can occur without any precipitating factors. Let me repeat. In most cases, pituitary apoplexy can occur without any precipitating factors. What are the possible risk factors? Abstention. Certain medications, major surgeries involving head and neck, coagulopathies, infection, head injury, radiotherapy, dynamic testing of the pituitary gland. What are the possible clinical features? The Clinical features that I will talk about will center around three major possible causes. Either secondary to the pressure effect on the optic nerve or pressure effect on the nerves to the ocular muscles or pressure effect on the blood supply. If that is not the cause of the clinical feature, then the, another part could be meningeal irritation, and of course, pan hypopituitarism. You know, pituitary gland has both anterior and posterior parts, and they both supply hormones. Okay, clinical features. Based on the previous slide, then we can be faced with the following. Headache, neck rigidity from meningeal irritation, nausea and vomiting, utter level of consciousness, visual field defect when there is compression on the optic chiasma, decreased visual acuity, and hemodynamic instability. Still on clinical features, Specifically, as per neuroendocrine system, there will be neuroendocrine system dysfunction. Apotalamic pituitary adrenal axis or apotalamic pituitary thyroid axis or apotalamic 
the Tutri Gunada Aziz will all be in trouble. Therefore, we may be faced with a Dizunian crisis when Apo Talami Pitutri Adena Aziz is in trouble. Apo Tairodism in the face of Apo Talami Pitutri Tairoda Aziz or infertility when we are dealing with Apo Talami Pitutri Gunada Aziz. Still with neuroendocrine system dysfunction, we can have symptoms or presentation with impotency, decreased libido, menstrual irregularity, difficulty breastfeeding, hypoglycemia, hypotension, hyponatremia, fatigue, and of course impaired growth when growth hormones are affected. How do you make diagnosis here? First thing first, appropriate, thorough, and correct history. And we need to have physical examination done, which must include visual acuity, visual field, and complete neuro examination. We should have CT of the head, but the best diagnosis tool here will be magnetic resonance imaging, MRI. We must have lumbar puncture done when we are faced with you now signs and symptoms of meningitis. When we have lumbar puncture done, that will help us with meningitis or subarachnoid hemorrhage. Still on diagnosis. We will not limit diagnosis to radiological investigation, we will add to the lab. With lumbar puncture done, we will have the CSF for analysis. We should have complete blood count done and coagulation studies. Remember, we said that tumor, bleeding, infarction, and so on. So we want to know what's happening to the coagulation cascade there. And we have Renal function test done. With that, we'll be able to know what's happening to creatinine, blood, real nitrogen, electrolytes, and so on. We must have liver function tests done. That will help us with coagulation studies because all clotting factors are manufactured in the liver except two, and that is factor eight and von Willebrand factor. We'll need to assay the level of certain hormones. Remember, I've said it's going to affect the pituitary gland, right? The pituitary gland is in trouble, and the endocrine system will be affected. So we'll check for the level of prolactin, know what luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone is saying right now. We have to know the value of adenocorticotropic hormone particularly in the face of Arizonian crisis. Thyroid function tests could be done with TSA T3, T4 in the face of hypothyroidism. And later on, later on, growth hormone effects will manifest with impaired growth. But right now, we can know the value so that we know how to help. And of course, immediate action will include knowing the value of glucose. Okay, when it comes to treatment, first thing first, we'll start with A, that is the airway. We have to check the nostrils, the mouth, the ears for potency. Any foreign body, remove. Any secretions, sunshine as it may be appropriate. Then the B is about breathing. What is the O2 sir, please? If it is low, give oxygen. What is the respiratory rate right now? Any peripheral cyanosis, any central cyanosis. Is trachea elevated to any side? About the chest, any obvious deformity? And is it moving with abdomen? We have to auscultate, we have to percuss. Then we move to C, that is circulation. 
At this point, we'll ask the nurses for vital signs. What is the BP this time, please? What is the heart rate? And of course, we will auscultate and check for signs of dehydration. Then we will have full resuscitation, set the IV fluid, group and cross match because we don't know how much blood has been lost and depends on the vital signs, hemodynamic stability or not. So full resuscitation, pass the Foley catheter, know the fluid in and out, and we have to replace whatever should be replaced. Then we move to sample collection for baseline hormone level. Okay, then we continue to observe and have conservative approach for most of the cases. However, the definitive management many times will remain surgery, but surgeries are reserved for cases that are getting worse. And how do you know that? With decreased level of consciousness or worsening visual field defect. Still on treatment, we have to reevaluate for hormonal changes once the acute phase is over. We have to treat as the hormone deficiency might indicate with long-term supplement. For example, we can treat apothyroidism with level tyrosine. And of course, you have to get a pen and be ready to send a referrer to endocrinologist or neuro or BOPS. And with that, I've come to the end of this presentation. Please remember to share, remember to subscribe. I appreciate it.